Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. My name is Devin Knight, and in this module, we're going to be looking at the dial gauge. Now, the dial gauge is a pretty simple visual, but it's pretty good at showing you things that you would want to see from a KPI. So if you had a KPI or a KPI type data, you would be able to visualize it inside of a gauge. Now, I say it's pretty good at doing those things, but there's a lot of debate over whether or not gauges in general should be included in dashboarding tools. If you do some research and you find some of the visualization experts like Stephen Few, you'll oftentimes see a big debate over whether or not gauges should even be included in a dashboard simply because they're very limited in what they can show and how they actually show things. So I'm going to leave that debate aside for today and we're just going to show you what this visual can do and I'll let you make up your own mind. Now I will point out to you here as we go in looking at this visual that there are no specific format settings. So oftentimes in these videos we show you all the different settings that you have underneath the format section Unfortunately, there are no settings that you can really adjust in this one. So it's all data driven. It's all about the fields that you drop in. And you'll see that as we get started here in this uh, visual here in a moment. Now, this visual is published by CloudFront's technology. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at where we can go download this visual, what to do once we go download it, and then how to use it. All right, so our first stop, at, as always, is going to be at the visuals gallery for the Power BI custom visuals. That's visuals.powerbi.com. You can go there and you'll be redirected to the site that we're at now. And if you scroll down, you'll find that there is the dial gauge right here. And you can go ahead and select the dial gauge. You'll see there is a little documentation on how to use it here, but you'll also be able to download the sample, which includes a small bit of documentation there as well for how to use it. But your first step is going to be, of course, to go ahead and download this. So download the visual and store that somewhere that you can find it here in a few moments. And then once you have that downloaded, you can work your way over to the Power BI desktop. Now, I happen to have the Power BI desktop already open here, so I'm going to switch back over to that. And we're going to start by bringing in some basic sales data. It's just one row of data, but I really just want to get you the idea of how to use the dial gauge. So to use this one, we're going to start by going to pull in that sales data that I just mentioned. And so you'll go up here to the Get Data section, and we'll select Excel as our source because we're going to be using an Excel file as our data source. Once you select Excel, you'll then be prompted to choose where that uh, source file is located here. And in our case, it's called Sales Goals. You'll go ahead and select Sales Goals and then click Open. Now again, I usually store these files somewhere on my blog or in the YouTube uh, description so you can be able to find that file as well. Or if you've purchased this class, you can also download the entire class files from us. All right, so I'll select Open, and that's going to bring us open to our spreadsheets or give us a list of all our spreadsheets here. In this case, we only have one, which is called KPI, and it has just one row of data that we're going to be able to use to show this visual off. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit load, and that's going to pull this data now into the Power BI desktop, into the data model. And then we're going to go next to actually bring this data into the dial gauge. Now, before we import the dial gauge, what I would like to do is go ahead and give you this data in a table so you can see just what it looks like, at least for now. Okay, so let me bring all these in, and I'll place this into a table, and I'll make that text size larger so you can actually see what the data looks like. And that way, as we start to work with the dial gauge, you'll have an idea of exactly what the data looks like and uh, that might help. All right, so I've got that data now in here as a table. Now we're, our next step is to bring the dial gauge in. So I'll select the import option here to import from file in the visual section, and we'll tell it that we want to import a custom visual. And then you'll select import again, and then you'll go choose the custom visual that we downloaded together just a few moments ago. Now I've already downloaded mine. I can go find where I've downloaded mine and kind of the central place here where I have the dial gauge 1.0.1. All right, so I'll hit open. That's going to bring the dial gauge in. It's imported successfully. And we should see that dial gauge now appear here. All right, good deal. So it kind of looks like a compass here. It's an odd, odd looking uh, icon for it. So we're going to go ahead and select the dial gauge, though, to get that visual on our design surface. And we're going to start to place some data elements inside of it. Now, this is probably one of the most confusing as far as where the fields go. So I'm going to try and describe this the best I can. But I will admit there is some confusion with this one with where exactly the fields go inside the field well here. So let's walk through this one and kind of talk through it. Maybe there might be a few areas where it just doesn't quite make sense, but hang in with me here. I'm going to try and make the most sense of it as I can. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is you want to specify your range of values that appears on the gauge. Okay, so I have in here a max, a field called max. You can see what the value of, of it is here. It's 200. And what that max does is it defines the top end of the gauge. All right, so if I select max here and drag it into the max section, try that one more time. You'll notice that the 200 is the maximum value that we can have on this gauge. Okay, so that should be pretty obvious what that means. That's just identifying the maximum value that can appear on this gauge. Okay, that one's not too difficult. 
Now the other thing that you want to do next is probably bring in an actual value. And so I have an actual value in my data set. The actual value here is 165. And you'll probably want to go ahead and drop that in a section here called pointer value. So I'm going to dra drag the actual value underneath pointer value right here. And then that's going to uh, be able to identify the pointer that's actually showing on top of the visualization here. Okay, so those two make pretty decent sense. Uh, but here's where it really gets a little trickier is when you start to define the other elements, the other thresholds, like the red threshold and the yellow threshold, and then the remaining green threshold that we already have, that's where it begins to get a little confusing, okay? So bear with me a little bit here as I start to describe some of these. The next thing that I'd like to do and bring in here is basically what the red threshold would be. So usually when you look at a gauge, you have a section of it that's red, a section of it that's yellow, and then a section of it that's green. Right now, all of ours is green. So if we wanted to find the yellow and the red, we need to bring in some fields to do that. And you'll notice if I look up here at our table, we have a couple fields that we can use for that. One is not satisfactory. And basically what not satisfactory here is defining is the ending point of our red threshold. Okay, so the red threshold would begin at zero and end at 75. And where you would drop this not satisfactory is in the actual end. This is the part that's kind of confusing. You have an actual start and an actual end. That's what defines the, the red threshold. So if I had a number in here and maybe I didn't want to start the red threshold at uh, zero, but I wanted to start it at 20, I can bring in an actual start here as well. In this case, I only have an actual end, which is my not satisfactory field. So I'm gonna drag that not satisfactory into actual end. And you'll notice here that it automatically takes up from the minimum value, which is at zero, to the 75 value that we dropped in there just a moment ago. So the actual end here is not satisfactory, 75, and you can see it goes to that 75 number right there. All right, so a little confusing, but uh, guess what? It's going to get a little bit more confusing here because our next one that we want to define is the yellow range. And in the yellow range, what we're going to be using is the target end. So what happens here, you could specify a target start and a target end, but if you only specify a target end, it's going to pick up wherever the red ended and go all the way to where the yellow number value appears, which is the target end. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to specify for our target end the last year values, okay? So our, our basically, if we're gonna be satisfactory here, we need to at least sell what we sold last year. If we wanna be in the green, then we need to beat last year's sales. So to identify that, you're gonna drag the last year value from the field well here, and you're gonna drop it into the target end, okay? And you'll see there it creates our yellow range where it automatically picks up from wherever our, our red threshold ended, okay? So a little confusing, again, you do have a target start as well. So if you didn't want the target start to be the same as the red ending point, then you could adjust that there as well. So very interesting different sections in here that you can play around with. Now you'll also notice there's a percentage on the bottom. Now the percentage is defined by, there is actually a field in here called percentage. And right now it's in here, regardless of whether you provide something or not, it's always showing 0%. So you really probably wanna have some kind of a value in there because otherwise it just shows 0% and people are confused why you have a 0% in there. So what I have in here is uh, returning back a difference. And that difference is showing the percentage difference between last year and the current value. And we're gonna drop that into the percentage section here and you'll notice that it then creates a percentage for me. Okay, so it, it's pretty usable, it's nice. You can see a percentage difference between this year and last year. Of course, you need to probably put in here some kind of a text box to identify what that is. Uh, you can also, by the way, drop in a name, a chart name, and that's going to appear up top here if you wanted to have some kind of a name to the chart dynamically placed in here. Keep in mind, you also have a chart name up the top here. Anytime you have any visual, this is more of a visual name that's dynamically created. You can also adjust that underneath the format section here. All right, so that's pretty much it for this visual. Now, I will show you here that if you go underneath the format paintbrush that we usually spend quite a bit of time talking about, there's not really any f features in here that are specific to the dial gauge. All the features that you see here are features that exist in every one of the other visuals that we've played around with, things like the title. So if you wanted to add in a title or adjust the existing title, you could do that here. You could do something like performance gauge or something like that. And that way it is a little clear on what exactly is going on with this data. And you can center it and make it a little larger if you wanted to. You can change the, the font color if you wanted to. You can certainly probably play around with this to make it a little clearer on what it is. You can also, of course, come down here to the background. If you wanted to add a background color to it, you could do that. Just to give you a little peek at what that would look like. Look something like this where you can adjust the transparency. Um, I'm going to revert it back to normal. I don't think I need any of that. Lock aspect here has to do with whenever you resize it. So when I resize this, will it retain the same proportions that it has? And you can see it does. 
Underneath general, there's this is just the position that it's at on the screen. So you'll notice as I adjust this, it changes the width and height here. Underneath border, that's pretty clear what that is. That just adds border around it, so nothing too surprising there. But that's really what you kind of get with the dial gauge. It's pretty simple to use. Uh, it's very simple to use actually, but in some ways it can be a little confusing. So this, hopefully this video is helpful to be able to identify what each of these fields do whenever you go to drop them in the field well. And uh, hopefully you'll find this one kind of useful if you do use gauges inside of your dashboard. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next video.